Even when you're not doing something like physically, you can, you can train the parts of your brain that are actually used for doing it really physically. Uh, so that's like imagery or, or visualization, uh, both terms are yeah, used. Hi, I'm Maya. Uh, I'm a Dutch professional triathlete. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna race the Arena Games of uh, Super League this weekend. Further into Beth Potter, and there is Maya Kima coming up on Potter. Um, originally, I'm, I'm of course from the Netherlands. Uh, I live with my parents and my little brother in uh, Breda. Uh, but when I was 17, I moved to the south of the Netherlands. So that's uh, yeah, actually where the National Training Center for Triathlon is located. Um, at first, it really helped me just to be uh, a student as well, apart from being only an athlete. Um, because I had a lot of injuries, I had a lot of periods I couldn't race, I couldn't even train. So it's really nice to be not only the athlete, but also a person next to it. Uh, so I really love that and from the study itself of course yeah you, you can imagine you also learn that it's nice to be something else than just only an athlete um, and you learn a lot about of course the brain and you learn that um, even when you're not doing something like physically you can you can train the parts of your brain that are actually used for doing it really physically so I really try first like get all the information I need so uh, we were gonna swim, we're gonna run, we're gonna bike, then we have a short break, we're gonna run, we're gonna bike, we're gonna swim. I, first you have to know all that because otherwise you cannot imagine something. But before I went to bed, like actually when I'm in bed, um, as we saw the venue, uh, try to visualize the race. Like now I've been there, I can really like imagine where I have to walk, where everything is. Uh, so that's what I uh, did as well. I have to wait another one. <laughs> Especially with um, imagining movements, you have like actually kind of in the middle of your brain. Uh, you have the a part of your brain that is especially for movements and if you imagine you really try to imagine that you're moving something like you're drawing or you're swimming or cycling or whatever that that part of your brain becomes really active and you can measure that uh, so then you can like tell a computer yes or no because if you see highlighted yes and you want to say yes then you start imagining like really hard that you're doing something um, so yeah i actually see and i used it that the brain uh, can be active and can be trained while even laying just in bed, not moving. What are you thinking now? Uh, I was just in transition from the treadmill to the bike. Um, so I'm, I'm really trying to go through the whole race. Um, I'm not gonna do like every stroke and every step I have to do, but uh, mostly the most important parts. So the start, I try to feel the nerves before the start signal uh, for the swim. And I try to imagine at least the dive into the water, um, making some strokes, and then of course I like go quickly to the four uh, laps we have to swim. Um, then imagine like okay, I have to push the button, I have to come out of the water, um, I have to take off my cap and my goggles, put them in the box. Then I'm gonna run, and you have to run behind the treadmills. I'm on treadmill four, so I'm gonna try to run to there. Then I'm trying to figure out like imagine putting on my shoes, uh, jumping on the treadmill, getting it on, on speed. So I really try to feel the nerves as well. So not just gonna swim, no, I really try to stand there. Um, no, the cameras will be there. No, the competitors will be there. No, I will feel nervous. Um, and then imagine every stroke, actually, I, I do. Um, think about what I would might think during the race. Uh, maybe I don't see something, maybe I do, maybe um, some, some water comes in my goggle. I really try to think about all that and what I do if that happens. Um, so some people think uh, that, or say at least, that if you imagine your race, you should only do the winning part of it. So everything is going to be perfect and I'm going to win this race. I also believe that helps also with the nerves. 
Uh, but for me, it really helps also to imagine what if something doesn't go right. And especially in triathlon, so much can happen. Oh, and I fell, yeah. So in the second heat, you ran from the rent trap nail to the bike. And I don't know, it was wet and slippery. So I just like, like, woof, and I fell on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the day was good. The race was super tough. Like, you prepare, it will be very tough, but it is it, always even tougher than that. Um, but, but I'm quite happy, actually. Uh, the first heat was, was, yeah, was good. Uh, last heat was also very good, <laughs> but the second heat I had a pretty decent run actually. I was pretty happy with that. That's like the most tough part for me. Uh, but then in the run to watch the bike, <laughs> I made it like a nice sliding uh, beneath my bike. So I, I hit with my shin like the, 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 yeah, my shoe on the bike. So that, that hurts. And then I was like, okay, I'm on the floor and the group is already starting to ride. So I lost that group. Uh, so the second heat was okay, I'm just gonna sit this out actually. To be honest, I didn't expect I would slip when I was running towards my bike. I was thinking about all the corners and uh, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I knew what I was gonna do. Like if there's like a bigger gap than 10 seconds on, on the bike, uh, I wouldn't probably be able to, to, yeah, to close that gap. Um, so I, I was prepared for that and I saw also like there was just one Dutch girl behind me so it wouldn't make much sense to, to give it all anyways. Uh, so, so that was in there but it uh, went a bit different. <laughs> yeah, it's always a tough decision to be honest. Um, I, I'm always in doubt also before the race I've, I've thought a lot about that. Okay, it's not a double draft anymore, it's just a normal draft. Um, but still Swift really likes groups. Uh, and if you're not in a group, you can push the same watts, but if the group is pushing that watt as well, you're not going to close that gap. Um, so that, that's really tough because normally if it would be 10 seconds on the road, I would go for it. Like, no thinking, I would go for it. And now you, you have to think actually. And um, yeah, I think it takes some courage to not do it. Uh, so I was a bit, yeah, I thought about it a lot before the race. I think if I didn't thought about that before the race and I was in this moment, I would probably have gone all out anyways. These things happen and in this format it's Super League, uh, especially inside in the reigning games, uh, I, I was prepared for that. So I, I really love to race here and it really helps me also preparing for the next races uh, because I do have the nerves before and I go through everything I have to do for a race. So it's a really nice prep for, uh, for Yokohama actually. Um, but yeah, I knew things could go wrong. I mean, just saw Marco like uh, with, with the trap mill, yeah, things like that can happen and I was prepared that it could happen. Um, but yeah, of course, I, it wouldn't be, be would be better if it didn't happen. Yeah. That group of three, King Magudoy and, and Scrangebo are, are together and they're putting out big power to keep that group together. They're trying to stay away from, from Woff and Beto. Rachel Clammer a lot further back than I, I anticipated her being. She's not having a great stage one. Beth Potter, and there is Maya Kingma coming up on Potter. 